okay let's continue uh, now we have lists so lists are basically arrays in your own terms or basically that's how you define a list and it can have different types of elements also in the list and say this and whatever it's we have also atoms right so this is a valid list and elixir implements list in the linked list way of course you know about linked list or the dsa folks and which means that when you you know operate on linked list we have a tail and we have a head right so the operations on the you know last element will be the much greater because it will have to traverse the whole list because nothing is it's not index based right uh, this is more related to the linked list part. Go and read about linked list, then you will understand. So, basically, if you work on the head part or the first element, when you're trying to, you know, add a new element in all the other languages, we do array dot push. But now here we should do uh, not not just you know shift with JavaScript had. Don't get confused. So basically, the idea is when you want to add the element to the list, add that. On the beginning it will be more efficient than adding that into the last bit why because this is a linked list it's not index based that you can do like array and the array dot length and this will be the last index and stuff you you because linked lists are not index based cool so what i was saying if you want to add something try to add that on the first part so Let's create a list so that I don't have to write this again and again. So hello 2.22 and show. So we have a list and now we have to add the element to the list. Let's say world. So you can add that at the last like uh, this. This is how you add two lists. So you can create another list with the elements inside it so let's say this and if you print list it will have hello world sorry I didn't reassign it right so hello uh, and the worlds we added it to the last now we want to add something at the top like I said it's more efficient so we can add it like uh, uh, so I did explain you guys what I did here. This is basically this is how you add two lists in Elixir. So I created another list with the element and just appended the list plus plus with the Elixir operator. So next uh, we want to let's say add a new element to the list. So what we do? We have the list. So we created a list, a new list. And we, you know, post our list or you know, put put our list uh, into this. And now we can use the type symbol. This is basically, you know, just like you know, the spread of return is something. So inside the list, we have a list. And if we print this, we will have the nested list. But if we do this, right? So and this false. So we basically added the false inside the list at the head using this syntax and this pipe symbol we will learn more about that but basically what this did uh, you will get to know uh, just give me a second let me come to head and tail I will explain it. and also we just for your insights so this is an elixir operator and this is basically arity or whatever uh, how do you com pronounce it I don't know so this means that this is elixir operator which takes two arguments right so slash two means number of elements cool. number of arcs. and plus plus operator which adds a list cool. next uh, we also have list subtraction which is basically we have the list here so let's create a new list we can subtract, we can add some duplicate values in it. So 3.3 and false. So we can list, new list, 
e list minus minus e list and note that we have very interesting results here hello was you know gone but 2.2 sorry 3 remain why because we have we subtracted this is the new list right so we subtracted from the list so this is the output of the list this list not this list right just like we subtract 10 minus 2 it will return out 8 the output or the remaining value of the first right so this is the list and we all have 3 know that 3 didn't deduct out if it would have been 3.0 it would not deduct out because uh, the minus minus operator checks strictly which means you have to use just like using triple equal to 2.0 is not equal to 2 right that's why so it would have been 3.0 then only even then 3 would remain the same huh. cool so this uh, yeah hello was gone and note that uh, if you have duplicates let's say let's not create a reverse now because we have true we have some variable let's say right and and we have some duplicates right so let's say we have two duplicates so the first occurrence will be gone so the output will be hello and this is this after hello right so first occurrence will be gone by subtracting with the duplicates cool next is head and tail so we have two functions which are basically get the head and tail so this is our list so we have hd and we pass the list or we can do this hd is and we pass our one list and we get the head which is the hello and we have tail which is tl and we have the list so we get the tail tail is basically the remaining list after neglecting the first element so that's why it's giving us the list and the ht is the head which is the hello right and what else yeah we can also pattern match pattern match is yeah that's the stuff i was talking about when when i used something like new element to a list right so this is this is pattern matching what this means is if you have the list right and we want to pattern match the hello and the rest of the things so we do this you pattern match the first value which is the first value and the rest just like you know object destructuring in javascript i'm sure you would agree so now the first variable will be hello and the rest is the rest of the list yes so we are pattern matching from the list and this is the first variable and this is the rest of the list just like you know object destructuring and stuff next we have tuples i guess so tuples are basically you know similar to list but they are stored in con you know contiguously in the memory contiguously basically means the docs are confusing it basically means that they are st stored at one place in the memory which means if they are stored assigning them is easy right but if you need to modify them that is expensive because they are stored somewhere in the memory and now you need to decrease or increase the size and depending on that they will be you know reallocated to a different memory with a you know space according to needs and this will be more like you know inexpensive sorry expensive because they are sitting somewhere like there's a gap and they are sitting somewhere right and there's a limit space and other people are using the space around it like this space right like this and some this space right and so this is our variable this is a tuple right presume and this is the memory so hello is here and if you want to add another l to this right so we cannot add because there is no space because everyone is there and the space is same so 
what will happen is hello will be deleted and it will be reassigned a new memory with a new L. That's why it's expensive. Hope you understood. Cool. Next, uh, sorry, I was talking about tuples. Tuples. Right. So, how do you declare a tuple? Basically, curly brackets. And of course, different types. And these are basically used as a convention for the different types of the functions. Let's say you declare a function, you define a function and of course in let's say it's functional programming so you do single class, sorry, uh, you know, pure functions and stuff. I mean Haskell doesn't even allow impure functions as far as I remember. But uh, yeah, so if you define a function, you make a habit to, you know, use the written types and stuff for that. So what I mean is, if I use an inbuilt operator file dot create and give the path to a file which is invalid so it returns a tuple of error and you know e no e whatever the fuck this is so later on you can match like you store this or you can match or you can store this and this is the tuple then you can use the pattern matching to match if we got the error or not and this is basically in the when block i think or whatever the you know, switch case, synonym, and elixir. We'll get to that. Uh, yeah, I think that's it for this tutorial. I think, yeah, next we shall look at keyword list and map. And the, then maybe, let me see. Yeah, then we will come to enum pattern matching and stuff. Cool. Short video. I don't think so. Anyway.